Greetings this Saturday evening. It is time for our online Sunday school. We're so happy to have everybody on that will be on some now and then some will be coming on later times, maybe even later days. We do go ahead and put these videos on, uh, go ahead and upload them to YouTube and also to Rumble. So we will, but we'll put those links up uh, probably late later tonight. It could be even early tomorrow or late sometime. We'll get those up, I promise. And you can find those on YouTube and on Rumble. Okay, but we'll, we'll, we'll have the links put, put in the lesson uh, soon, probably tonight. I usually do them after when I finish the lesson. Okay, thank you for being on. We believe you, uh, that the Lord is going to help us. He has a plan for us. He has a plan for uh, this uh, for this lesson. It's a wonderful lesson, waiting for the Holy Spirit. And I want to key in on that word, holy. Key, uh, waiting for the Holy Spirit. The Lord impressed that on me recently, the importance of stressing holy. It's the Holy Spirit. And we're going to be taking our lesson from Luke chapter 24, 44 through 53, and also in Acts chapter 1, 1 through 26, and then Acts 2, 1 through 4. Our central truth is God gives the Holy Spirit to those who obey Him. And our key verse is from Acts 5 and 32. We are His witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey Him. And we have some objectives we want to pay particular attention to. We should accept that God's desire is for all believers in Christ to be filled with His Spirit. We will cultivate a desire to draw closer to God to be more open to the working of the Spirit in our life. We will be encouraged to set aside time regularly to seek the Lord and to ask Him to fill us with the Holy Spirit. You know that last objective, it really uh, makes you stop and think, and it is so important. It, sh it should be something that is just understood that we would do, but that we would regularly, that we would set aside time reg regularly to seek the Lord and to ask Him to fill us with His Holy Spirit. It is quite shocking sometimes to find out the number of people who profess Christianity who do not read their Bible on a regular basis. I'm telling you, it's, uh, it's, I think it's impossible to live an overcoming life without being regularly in the Word of God and communing with the Lord through, uh, through prayer. It's a wonderful thing to know the Lord. It's just to uh, be a child of God. Thank the Lord for the privilege and the honor. So as we begin this seven-week study of the first 12 chapters of the book of Acts, we'll be expanding uh, the uh, Pentecost lesson that we explored last week, which I really, really uh, enjoyed teaching that lesson last week. But Pentecost was just the beginning of a much larger plan that God had for the expansion of His church. But it all began with them waiting on the Holy Spirit. In fact, he said, do not leave Jerusalem until you have been filled with the Spirit. Well, now, they didn't know all the details of what really to expect, even though from the Old Testament they did know, and some of them probably were familiar with that. I'm sure there were those who were familiar, but they didn't really know exactly what to expect. So they were going to wait, and the Lord had told them, he said, not many days from hence that this would happen, this Holy Spirit would come. So they really didn't know, they didn't know what day. He just said not many days hence. So they didn't know what that meant. We might say several several days from now. But it also mentioned that at, uh, the writer wanted us to make sure that we knew is that Luke wrote, also Luke, he wrote the book of Luke as well as Acts and he was Paul's personal physician. So said actually the book of Acts could be considered as a sequel to the, to the gospel of Luke. But it mentioned here in our lesson, some, what are some things that require an accompanying, accompanying tool or other item in order for them to be useful? And it brought out uh, the, uh, items that were uh, like battery-powered tools or cans that needed openers or lamps that would need a bulb. Uh, and I thought, too, of two-part glue. You've seen some glues that you had, you know, two little tubes, and you had to, you had to have both had to have them mixed together. And I, I thought of a scripture in Hebrews. I always think of that. Uh, when it said the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith. And so, you know, you, we have to mix. It's not enough. There are people who can quote the Bible, uh, all, all so many scriptures, but they don't really know the Lord because they don't have faith and trust in God. And But they, they like to study the scripture till, so they can argue. And that's a sad thing. They don't apply the truth. But the word did not, uh, you know, it, it didn't it didn't prosper. It didn't help them. It didn't profit because it, didn't, it was not mixed 
with faith. All right, so it mentions here, said in our lesson, that sometimes you'll hear good things come to those who wait. Well, it isn't always true, but in any case, in this case, it was. It was going to, uh, the, on the day of Pentecost, the followers of Jesus, they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. God's timing and their waiting helped to fulfill that purpose when this gift was given to the early believers. So we know that this purpose continues to be fulfilled through Spirit-filled believers today. So what I, when we started uh, studying this lesson, we thought how that the Lord commanded them to wait and that the Spirit's power was promised and, and our, our writer brings out that the, the disciples were just beginning to understand what the Lord had tried to tell them. And I, I wrote on, in my book in another place, if only, if only they had realized earlier. But can't we all identify with times, maybe the things that the Lord has, we realized later what the Lord was trying to tell us, things he was trying to get through to us, and, and we didn't get it. We just didn't. It just didn't, it just, as we'd say, it just didn't register. And when later on, and it hits, you know, you, you, you understand, and you think, oh, if only, if only I had understood sooner, I could have been doing this, this, this. And something that I thought of, that uh, and they say don't use your own personal experiences, but I'm going to because I know them better than anything else. Uh, years ago, in fact, not in my early 20s, before I was married, the Lord impressed on me to get a ventriloquist figure and, so, and to use it in child evangelism. So that's what I did. I purchased one then it's time but I was always thinking Lord you called me to preach when I was nine years old and this isn't preaching and I just uh, even though I was telling Bible stories I was praying and asking the Lord to lead me and guide me as uh, as my ventriloquist figure Chesley and I would tell Bible stories and of course I was the voice of Chesley but how that I, I felt like I, I it wasn't really preaching it, it just really wasn't and I I really didn't have a burden for children's ministry though I had been saved in, in child in child evangelism actually in a in vacation Bible school, so I believe in child evangelism. I definitely believe in it, but I simply did not have a burden for it. I prayed for a burden for it, but I just simply I just felt like it's really not real preaching, and uh, I, that was something I had an issue with. But I traveled in full time child evangelism. In fact, that's how how I met uh, my husband. But I thought of how in the years after, then the Lord directed us to go into uh, pastoral work. So we were pastoring a church, and I rarely ever ever used the ventriloquist figure. It was just on a rare occasion. And I thought of how that it laid there. That was a tool that the Lord had given me to use and I wasn't using it. That was wrong. It was, But I, I, I just didn't feel like it was, I, I couldn't see that. Shame on me. It was awful. But I remember how that after we had, had left the pastoral ministry, we had retired from pastoral work, we had settled down to, pass, uh, to uh, go to a home, had our home church here and the Lord began to speak to my heart, and the pastor kn knew about that I had Chesley's ventriloquist figure. He wanted me to use him in a service, and I began to find out then, as, well, the Lord began to speak to me and encourage me to do a, to every Sunday afternoon, to go to YouTube and to do a Bible story with Chesley. Well, I began to use him, and it was amazing how many people that had been in crusades, now they were grown, married, and even had grandchildren, and they were sharing these videos and encouraging their children their grandchildren to to see this and I was just shocked and then and I, I could identify with the disciples like if only if only if only I had recognized you know the Lord knows best and it's the best thing to just say Lord I will do what you say whatever so let's if only they had recognized earlier but they didn't but now that they did they were trying to grasp it they were trying to get everything they could and after jesus was crucified i mean the crucifixion was a horrible horrible thing for them and you stop and think of the 40 days that they had had after the crucifixion and now here jesus there's been reports that people have seen he has appeared to the followers some of these people the disciples they had seen him and all and it was just shocking to them they had seen him crucified it was a horrible death and now he, he's raised from the dead they, they they see him here you know the lord wanted he had lessons he had things to tell them he was helping them he did not hold it against him what they had done but if only if only so there may be a message in that if only may we be so attentive to what the lord says his disciples were to be witnesses and how that the Lord had told them that they had to be, they had to forgive. They had to be, uh, they had to go forward now. 
they had to be. He said to think, he said, I had to die on the cross for the forgiveness of sin, be raised from the dead. But you need the power to spread the gospel. I've got to have the gospel spread. It wasn't going to be him doing it. He was going to ascend to his father. But he told, I like when our writer wrote out, wrote, said here that Jesus had the mission, the message, and the means to fulfill that calling. Believe, I believe they were all ears. Now that they, they recognize, they begin to recognize them and probably some of the the uh, scriptures they had read, and, and of course they had the, all the only thing they had was the Old Testament. But as they begin to think about these things, and it begin to, as we said, begin to click, it begin to fall in place. But they were ready to go. They were ready to obey when he said they were not to leave Jerusalem until they were filled with this Holy Spirit. And they were, and he said, you will receive power. That was the main thing. You will receive power. That they and they could spread this glorious gospel. And I thought of how they stood through persecution, and many of them died uh, for the faith. They became martyrs, but they were so true and so faithful to the Lord because they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So it mentions here in our lesson that the apostles were first-hand witnesses of Jesus' ministry and resurrection. Their mission was to proclaim this good news, and the message was that of the need for people to repent and receive the forgiveness of sins wonderful that we can be delivered from our sins we can have forgiveness of sins and then we have the means to fulfill the mission of proclaiming the message would be the power and work of the holy spirit so we're so thankful good to see you on sandra and larry right and the spirit's presence and power in the life of believers was a promise from the father i'll tell you when the father speaks we need to listen you know in the natural when my earthly father spoke I needed to listen. It was important that I listen and carry out what was said. But Jesus focused on the final instructions before he was leaving. He was fixing. He knew he was going to be ascending to the Father. So he was giving the final instructions here. Don't you know the disciples were all ears? I mean, they had so many questions. And the last 40 days had been totally shocking what they had been through. So now Jesus was focusing on these final instructions, and I know they were all ears. He said the keynote of his teaching was their need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. So thankful. There's evil spirits, but this is precious Holy Spirit. The third member of the God, he put the power of the Spirit working through them. They would be witnesses of Jesus wherever they went. But you know, they were curious about the future of the Jewish nation. And they wanted to focus on that. They wanted to focus. They were. Uh, they, they wanted to focus. Well, what, what's later on? And what's? It? But he told them, "You are to. You are to be, just intent on spreading the gospel. That's what you need to do. Spread the gospel to the nations." Well, there was a great need for these disciples. They needed further instruction. But they. Uh, but he said, just main, the main thing is this. You know, there, there was. There was just time was so short now because Jesus was going to be going. So he said to them. I want you to say, I'm, I'm going to be leaving. I'm going back to the Father. But don't you dare leave Jerusalem until you have been filled with the Spirit. He said, not many days hence. So they didn't know what that meant, but not many days hence. And so here they were willing to obey the Lord. They knew was asking the Lord, well, what about, you know, getting rid of all the, you know, being under the, the, uh, the Roman rule and all. And he would have to redirect them and say, your main thing, the number one thing that you do now this is this is your mission this is what you are to do is to spread this gospel as far as you possibly can in our lesson brought i really liked what our writer brought out he said that christians can get caught up trying to decipher end time events and fail to stay on mission that is so true there and i know there are some people who are just gifted at understanding prophecy my husband the lord has definitely gifted him to understand it i'm not one of those and he gets into it, and, and, he, and he loves it, and so I, I, and I'm all for people. And you know, I really believe that the Lord does give ministers many times something that is just like the key thing that they minister on. It don't, they do have a variety of things, but there will be that will be a thread that will always run through their their messages. But I, I thought this was interesting that our, our writer we brought out that the Greek word for witness is where we get our our word uh, martyr. From that word think about that and you know they did mo many of them I think most of the disciples w were martyred but I think and I believe and I'm sure it was because of the Holy Spirit they could stand they were strong they were stalwart and they knew that they were going from this life to live with the Lord forever so part number two in our lesson worshiping and waiting 
and worshiping is so important worshiping the lord instead of just asking asking for the lord yes it's one thing to be thankful to the lord but he said after he had given final instructions to his followers concerning their need to be clothed with power from on high through the gift of the holy spirit then he blessed them he blessed them then he ascended into heaven he blessed him. Well, what all did he say? We don't really know the last, uh, but we do know the last words of his, of, of his to his disciples was blessing, and what was included said it could have been like the one in John chapter 17 in his prayer. He asked for them to be protected, to have unity, and, and to experience joy, as they were sent into the world to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. And as he ascended into heaven, I like this. I love this. As he ascended into heaven, the disciples worshipped him. They finally got it. They finally got it. You know, they just couldn't get out of their mind while he was here. That, you know, all these miracles he did and he was going to get rid of this Roman government or get rid of, get them out of it. And that's what they were, what they were looking at. But he had, oh, so much more. They worshipped him. They worshipped him as he ascended. And I just, you think about what that did for for Jesus Christ that had spent three years helping them and trying to get them to see the truth. He had taught, he had trained, he had prayed to the Father, he had done everything he could do, but they still couldn't get it. But now here they are, and now he's hearing them worship him, and he knows they got it, they got it. They're gonna spread this message, but well, what did they do? They said, well, let's go do what he said. Let's go, and let's, let's go, and let's, 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 let's go, go back, let's go to Jerusalem, we've got to be here. We've got to go and we've got to wait. You know, waiting is never an easy thing. You know, especially when you don't really have a timeline. They'll just say, well, it's going to be a little while. You need to just be able to go over there and sit there and wait. And, and you know, what it, the thing that they were, that you know, there's waiting is an active thing. Uh, it's not well. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what, why this doesn't happen. I, I thought it was. I thought it would be before now. Well, I, we don't hear anything about that in the scriptures. The Bible said they were all with one accord in one place. Well, what they did in the meantime, there was things that needed to, to be done. They knew that they had some things that they needed to accomplish, and so uh, what they did. It's also mentioned in our lesson that it, the people who came. It also included Mary, Jesus' mother, and his half brothers who had come to uh, to believe in him. They were there too. I tell you, it, like we said, what these disciples had been through in the last 40 days and the mother of Jesus, imagine what she, the horror of what she had experienced. But now the Lord was telling them something that was going to happen that was going to be so great, it was going to literally change their lives. But while they were, they were obeying, they were receiving, they were willing to be obedient and wait for this to happen. But they, they knew that they had something they had to do. And I think this was something they really didn't, didn't want to deal with, but they knew they needed to. Remember that Judas had had failed, and how he had he had betrayed the Lord. It was a horrible thing, how he had betrayed, had pretended to be a, a you know a close disciple, which really he 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 did he did wrong. And they said, well, what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to to have. And so, as our lesson said, they had their probably the first church business meeting, and so they said we're going to have to find a successor here. But told how that they 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 said that the type of person who it had to be. It had to be somebody who had company with them, who knew Jesus, had been a follower and all. They had the, the things that would need to be uh, who, so that they could choose the person that, that would need to be. Two men met the qualifications, said the new apostle would need to have been one of Jesus' followers throughout his earthly ministry. So the two people were uh, Barsabas and Matthias. And after pr uh, praying for the Lord to reveal his choice, the believers cast lots. And you think, what? Cast lots? That doesn't seem, and said so some people might feel like, well, that, that doesn't seem like a very reasonable thing to do. But casting lots was a very uh, common thing, apparently, uh, from what our writer says was a common thing. And, and they really trusted God to, and they would have these, these two names. And then when the name was, I, I guess we'd say like just pulled out of the hat, but they had these two names and they, that was casting lots. and. See, it was very, very common. It was done. Well, when they pulled it out, it, was, it, it had the man that was chosen to be Matthias was chosen to replace Judas. So the 12 were called to serve as primary witnesses of Jesus' uh, teaching and his resurrection. And now these people, now they, they'd done this, and they were wondering probably, when is it going to happen, this Holy Spirit? When is it, what's it going to be like? And uh, they had to probably get away from that. 
They had to go back to worshiping. They had to go back to praising and glorifying the Lord and worshiping and thinking, you know, wasn't it something? You know, those two fellows that were on the road to Emmaus when Jesus appeared to them, they didn't recognize him. And then, but how that they said, you know, didn't our hearts burn within us? Remember how that when they had had the meal together and he prayed over them, and that's when they recognized who he was. So they, they all could tell their stories of what it was. But then all oh, there here they are all with uh, one mind and one accord on this day of Pentecost. And here it was the 50th day after Passover. It was one of the three great mm -hmm. feasts celebrated by the Jewish people. And people gathered from all these, from all these, uh, told the Jewish people gathered to Jerusalem to worship from all these different uh, multiple countries around. And so here in God's timing was just exactly right. And on this day, and said, you know, it was the sound of a rushing mighty wind. And how that then there was like, it said that it looked like flames of tongues or fire appeared and settled on each of them. And then the old, and said, it, and I like this in our lesson, it said, in the Old Testament, wind and fire were symbols of the Holy Spirit. So these 120 believers that were gathered there, they would immediately get that connection there. They were understanding. So these two signs were not repeated any other place in the Bible, but the speaking in tongues was. Can you imagine what that was when these people, and we mentioned it last week, but it's wor uh, worth repeating again. And so, well, I know this person's not from here, and you heard probably maybe the accent was different and all, but they, but they were speaking their language. Can you imagine what it was? Well, I know they don't know my language. I don't know. And they, they were all speaking in tongues, and, and, they, and they recognized this is supernatural. This is it. This is that. But you know that the Holy Spirit had was just has just was coming in. They were speaking in tongues. But then I think you stayed there. They didn't just jump up and say, "I got it." I don't think they just they did that. They just wanted to stay in the presence of God, and they wanted the Holy Spirit to have them. You know, you can Lord, you can have not just my tongue. You can have everything. You can have my whole life, just everything. Every take part, a charge of every part of me. I want to be like you. I empower me with. We needed. They needed the anointing. And there was that anointing that they were empowered to go out and fulfill the call that God had placed on their lives. And we mentioned it last week, but it's worth mentioning again. Everywhere they went, when they were cast out of places, it was just like you were stamping a fire. Just like you, you put it, and when it did, what did it do? It just spread it. And they, they didn't matter whether they put them in prison, if they what, and even how Peter will, you know, was the Lord delivered him from prison, the chains fell off of him, and how he was just, an angel just led him right out and opened the door for him and all. And so, just an amazing thing that the Lord did for these people because they were filled with the power, filled with the Spirit. They filled with the Spirit. And that Jesus said, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So what is God saying to us? You know, I believe he's saying to us that he's calling us and he's empowering us. That's what this calling and empowerment is. It's not just to sit around and speak in tongues. We do appreciate the, the, the gift of, there is the gift of tongues. And I want to mention too, this is one thing that is, goes hand in hand that the Lord has for us. The gifts and fruits of the Spirit. Yes, we're so thankful for, the, for these various gifts, you know, the gift of faith. You think of how this operates in the church and the blessing it is, but to, you must have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Then we can ask for these gifts, the gift of faith, the gift of knowledge, the gift of wisdom, the gift of miracles, the gifts of healing, that's plural, the gifts of healing, discerning of spirits, prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues. We don't have time to go through all of those. But these are gifts I think of in today's world especially. But it's always been. But you think in the times that we are living, I'm telling you it is vitally important that we as children of God are earnestly praying and saying, Lord, Lord, I pray for the gift of faith. You know how many times, we're going to need faith more and more, I believe, all of the time, uh, especially going forward. And the gift of knowledge, it's not just that you can be a busybody and know everything. But we need uh, knowledge. We need wisdom to go with the knowledge. You know, you've had, uh, you've sought the Lord, and the Lord has showed you something. Possibly, I know I had the Lord show me something one time. A, a former school teacher, and I, the Lord had always given me a burden for her. And when the Lord had, uh, showed me one time, I knew, I knew that she, she was in trouble, and I could see her just like laying on the floor. 
and was in need and I was just under a burden for like two or three days crying out and praying and trusting God and when I received word from a relative said oh and they called his teacher's name she lived in where where they lived in their in their community and she said oh said she had a stroke and said she lay in the floor for three days and the the person that was that, that was there that lived there had had just left and and said apparently she had that stroke right after that person had left but I think of how God in his graciousness let me know that and I could pray and believe and, and believe the Lord for him I'm so thankful was able to to minister and uh, and just but you know the Lord he wants to use this for a, a purpose it's got a reason that's saying things to be done with the, with the right purpose wisdom and miracles oh for the the gift of miracles we each one need to be praying for those I believe in the time and the place that we say Lord whatever gift you want to use me in I'm available and I am ready to be used of you in this in this time a discerning of spirits by all means discerning of spirits yes the Lord wants to help us with that the gift of discerning of spirits that we can you know there'll be just that quickening you you will know you you will even know the Lord can t t discern you may know this is not a right spirit it may tell you exactly what this spirit is that you're dealing with and what about prophecy it's it's not only a, a foretelling it's not but it's also foretelling and then we have t the gift of tongues and the gift of interpretation of tongues if a person stands up and just gives a message and it's just tongues and there is not an interpretation of those tongues what was really the the benefit of it it's not really been helpful to us so may we all be seeking believing God to use us and we say Lord whatever gift there may be one in particular that you want I have particularly prayed for the gift of discerning of spirits and the gift of knowledge and the gift of wisdom I, f I felt like knowledge without wisdom it is really I think those two in, in my view they go together knowledge nine the Lord will show you something in light and you will know how to pray more specifically and also the fruits of the Spirit we should be the sweetest people how many of you like fruit I've only known one person that didn't like fruit we had a, a man in our church that we pastored that he did not like fruit and I was shocked I'd tell him brother Bert I've never heard of anybody that didn't like fruit until I met you he was a wonderful man he just did not he couldn't help it he just didn't eat it in the natural he just didn't like fruit but he loved the fruits of the Spirit so we love this love the fruit of the Spirit is love joy peace faithfulness long-suffering gentleness patience meekness kindness there's nine fruits of the Spirit and nine gifts of the Spirit. Isn't that terrific? The Lord has just got, I tell you, the Lord is so good. He's just got, He's done everything He could to prepare us to live here and to live with Him forever. So the lesson asks, the final portion here, what is God saying to us? The Father's promise, gift of the Holy Spirit is still available to those to follow, who follow Christ. Never is it, is it said that we're sorry, we're out. There won't be any more no it's not any of that he's never run out it's not that no it's parked on a ship out there and we can't get it here no the Holy Spirit is not bound by man's laws and rules praise the Lord for that having observed how obedience to the Lord was required for the first believers to receive the gift consider how obedience to the Lord might be displayed by believe by believers today and this is what our writer said Jesus clearly taught that living as his follower means having the Holy Spirit at work in one's life the Holy Spirit the Lord impressed it on me to to really come down the Holy Spirit will do holy things will speak holy will will be holy in our on our attitudes in our relationship in our business dealings we're going to be holy uh, if we have have wronged somebody when as soon as we know it, what we're going to do the Holy Spirit is at work in our life he will he brings conviction on us when the Holy the, Conviction is one of the greatest things, gifts that the Holy Spirit does. One of the greatest things, tools that he uses. I'm so glad he convicted me when I was an eight-year-old girl, convicted me of my sin. I got down, he didn't convict me, make me feel like I was just, you know, worthless and I need to just, just leave. But it was, no, to come to him, he wanted to cleanse me and make me whole. And I'm so thankful that he did. I came, and the Lord, I'm thankful that Sister Marie McClure came down to the altar and prayed with me. That was a long time ago at Apache, Oklahoma, and we had just one uh, Pentecost Thomas church there. We lived at Apache, and I'm thankful that she was a teacher that day and came down and prayed with me. I appreciate it. 
So the baptism in the Holy Spirit helps believers develop the fruit of the Spirit and manifest all the spiritual gifts. We've just gone over those. Believers who have not been filled with the Holy Spirit should definitely seek for that, for that gift. Why would you not want a gift that the Lord has? I'm telling you, when the Lord's offering us a gift, that's, I'm telling you, it couldn't come from any, any higher than that, any better than that. And then we're told believers who have been filled with the Spirit are to learn how to walk in the Spirit and live by the Spirit. That's from Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 through 25. The Lord is not finished with us. Lord, until I tell people I want to be working and serving the Lord until I'm on the morgue slab. And I, when I die, I want a big smile on my face. That's what I, I want a big smile on my face and that and I want to be I want to be worshiping the Lord and, and just as one lady a, a gentleman told us about he said I was he said I'm told that when my grandmother died he said that the, she I said she opened she just like opened her eyes right before she died and said hello Jesus and closed her eyes in death so well may we just worship the Lord and be exactly what he wants us to be and even though we don't understand some things that we are going through and will go through may we just worship and honor and adore him and know think about he suffered we can't say well he doesn't know what this is like oh yes he does he knows what it is to be hated he know he knows what it is to be what just told how great he was and then about the same people one week later was saying crucify him crucify him he knows what rejection is yet he loved us and he didn't say I give up father I don't want anything to do with him he loves us with an undying love and may we do the same to him we love you Lord we just can't stop loving you we don't want to stop loving you we want to worship you all the days of our life we'll work for you and remember as silver citizens we never age out you be blessed and we'll see you next late next Saturday night the Lord willing goodbye